The recent attempts by the government to change the retirement age don't go anywhere near solving the problem. As people have lived longer, the strain on the NHS, the demand for medication, more doctors, nurses and other staff, as well as a skyrocketing cost of caring for the elderly, has pushed our finances to breaking point. In fact, as state spending has grown, so has the cost of running the welfare system itself. For instance, the state employs half a million civil servants. To put that into perspective, during the height of the British Empire, when Britain ran a quarter of the planet, the state employed just 4,000 civil servants. If you're in any doubt just how out of control state spending has become, simply take a look at this. As you can see, spending has exploded in a way no one could have imagined a hundred years ago. With the idea of welfare being such a vote winner, no government could take the bull by the horns and cut it back, not in any meaningful way. They could fiddle round the edges and save a few pennies here and there, but as population grew larger and lived longer, all they could really do was sit back and let a future generation sort it out. And now it's come down to us. In 2012, for example, the government spent roughly £120 billion more than it collects in taxes. In a situation like this, when you spend more than you earn, there's only one way of paying for it, by borrowing money. That alone is bad enough, but remember, we also have to service our debts, to pay interest on a pile of debt that's mounting ever higher, debt that we'll never pay back. So a vicious cycle was set in motion. Politicians realised that to remain in office, they needed to make bigger promises, call for bigger reforms, and ultimately borrow more and more money. This addiction to debt has spread into every corner of British society. Banks, businesses, the ordinary man on the street. These days they all carry a great weight of debt. Debt has become normal. Want a holiday? Pay for it on credit. Want a new crowd-pleasing cut in taxes? Fund it with debt. To put it bluntly, our politicians, so-called educated people who were meant to be looking after our interests, acted like teenagers with their first credit card, all to win votes. If the UK had been a business or an individual, we'd have been declared bankrupt by now. We'd have been forced to sell our business premises or our home and would have been housed in a run-down flat long ago. We are broke. We have been for a long time. But very soon, it will really hit home. So what's different about today? Why can't the government just keep giving us more and take on more debt to pay for it? That's worked for a hundred years. Why won't it work now? The answer to that is simple. The explosion of government spending and government debt has mostly come in the past 30 years, and during that time it's been easy and cheap for the government to borrow money. You see, interest rates on the government's debt have been steadily falling for 30 years. Here, let us show you. In 1982, Margaret Thatcher's government had to pay 15% to borrow money for three years. This came in the form of a bond, a gilt. Anyone with money, be it a rich country or a pension fund, could invest in the bonds and receive 15% interest in return. But over time, the government's borrowing costs have fallen dramatically. Now, the government only has to pay 2% to borrow money over the same period. That's seven times cheaper than in 1982. And low interest rates make it easier to borrow money. Debt has been getting steadily cheaper for three decades. That has allowed the government to borrow more and more money without having to face the consequences. But these good times are about to come to an end. The simple truth is, if interest rates were at their normal rate of 5%, instead of around the extremely low 2% they're at right now, there's absolutely no way Britain could ever repay its debts. In fact, at normal rates of interest, we're already bust, not just in over our heads, but six feet under. It's simple maths. If interest rates moved back towards the normal 5% level, our cost of borrowing would triple. Just to put that into context, 
if our current debt repayments tripled, the government would have to take drastic action, like abolishing the state pension, or privatising the NHS, or pushing tax rates back up to 90% as they were in the 1960s. In short, Britain would change radically. And that's just if interest rates move back to normal levels. The fact is, when you're in a lot of debt, interest rates are either your lifeline or your death sentence. So long as rates stay low, you can just about keep things on track. You can service your debts, keep borrowing and keep the wolves from your door. When rates move higher, you get squeezed and eventually you're finished. All of a sudden, you have to find more and more money to cover the interest on your debt. This is an extreme example of what happens when interest rates take off. As you can see, in 2009, the Greek government could borrow money at just 1%. Then, in the wake of the financial crisis, the Greek economy hit the rocks, fell into recession, and the markets realised what a complete mess the country was in. Interest rates shot up vertically, and Greece imploded, not just financially, but socially and politically too. As you've seen on the news, there have been riots, suicides, overnight poverty, snap elections and crushing general strikes. People couldn't get their money out of banks fast enough. Businesses collapsed. In that environment, just keeping your family safe is a big challenge. That's the danger of rocketing interest rates to a country with huge debts.